Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK. I'm out foraging in uh, the beer garden of one of my local pubs. It's late in August and we've had some lovely rain recently, which is great for a mushroom forager. Now, late in August, there's one family that shows itself in all kinds of environments. It's uh, the agaric family. I've done some videos on some other members of this family, the horse mushroom and uh, the prince, which are both lovely. Uh, this one's probably a little bit more common. I'm gonna show you now how to identify the field mushroom, which grows all over the country, and as the name suggests, mainly in fields or grassy areas. So if we come down here, you'll see we've got a tiny little baby. Now I'd never pick that, that's far too young. This one here has, uh, has been eaten a little bit already and I believe we've got the culprit <laughs> right there of the holes in this mushroom. They're popular mushrooms. Um, other things will eat them too. Now, they do grow in large quantities when you find them. They're only small mushrooms for the agaric family, but you get lots of them. So just to follow this ring, we've got more here. And it might be good just to, just to stand there and pan back so you can see how far it goes on. We've got more babies there. More babies going around here. And if you follow me, Another little baby there, some more here, got a nice mature one here, so I'll pick this just to uh, help with all the ID features in a second. There we go. Then moving around, we've got another sort of middle-aged fella there, some more there, and not far away growing in another ring, up this way we have another group starting there, working its way round here, down here, and over this way, to, to what is probably the nicest little collection here. Now, as I said, these are an agaric the field mushroom, Agaricus campestris, and I'll just briefly run through the normal ID features for an agaric mushroom. Most of them are white on top, apart from the prints and a few others. Uh, they all have a stout white stem. Most, or all, actually, have a skirt, unless it's brushed off or got damaged, like this one here. They do not grow from an egg sac or a bulbous base, and importantly, they never have white gills. That rules out a mushroom that can look quite similar um, with white gills called the Amanita verosa or the destroying angel which as the name suggests is quite a dangerous mushroom so the gills start off pink in the young specimens and they go through to brown and even sort of almost black when they're very mature much like your portobello mushrooms and that's because these are very closely related to your portobello mushrooms so I'm gonna pick one of the younger ones just to show you, when young, they're pretty much just like your closed cut mushrooms. You can't see the skirt because the cap is still attached to the stem by the skirt or the veil. Now if I get, we'll see this one. Ah, yeah, there you go. So the cap has now detached and it's left that skirt there. Now with this member of the family, what you also get around the edge of the cap is the kind of remnants of the skirt, like a little kind of curtain all around the very edge of the cap. And even on this more mature one, you can still see that kind of curtain effect hanging, if I turn it the right way up, hanging down from the edge of the cap. This one's slightly discolored, but they're generally white. And you do get a kind of a downy sort of texture to the top of the cap. You can see that on all of these. It's not smooth and shiny. The horse mushroom and the yellow stainer tend to be more shiny. So we've got a delicate, one of the, probably one of the smallest agarics that we find, but you find it in vast quantities and it's a lovely, lovely mushroom. There are, well, there is one sort of poisonous look-alike to this mushroom. 
There's two poisonous ones in the family, but the Agaricus moelleri has a, a sort of darker patterning on the cap. So the poisonous mushroom you have to beware of when you're picking your field mushrooms is the yellow stainer. Agaricus xanthodermis. Now, as the name suggests, the yellow stainer, when damaged, will stain yellow most of the time. But when they're dried out, they don't tend to stain very much at all. So the first test to determine whether your agaric's edible is to run your nail over the cap and see what color it stains. Now, full stop, if you've got an agaric that stains a little bit red, then it's edible. Sometimes though, your horse mushrooms, and sometimes even these ones, can blush a tiny little bit yellow, which sets off alarm bells. Now, there's two tests though in this family to determine whether you've got an edible mushroom. The yellow staining is just the first one. The second one is the smell. So obviously you need to be able to trust your own sense of smell to do this test. Um, and the the poisonous ones, when you do use your sense of smell, are quite easy to, to determine or differentiate from the nice edible ones because the edible ones smell edible. They basically, they smell of mushroom. This one will smell of mushroom, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, mushroom with, the uh, I'd say, incredibly mild hints of aniseed. The other edible ones in the family will smell of aniseed, like the horse mushroom. And then you've got the prince, which is a sort of exception to most rules. It smells a bit of almonds and to aniseed of some people. The yellow stainer and the morellery, for, for that matter, the darker toxic one in the family, both smell awful. They smell of, of chemicals. People describe them as smelling of Indian ink or of phenol. Uh, whereas this one smells almost identical to the mushrooms that you might get in the shops. Your closed cut mushrooms, your button mushrooms and your portobellos. And that's because it is almost identical. It's the same family of mushrooms. The field mushroom, a really, really lovely one to know about. But you do have to beware the yellow stainer because it's so similar to this mushroom that I think it causes the most poisonings of any fungus in Britain every year. Um, so definitely one to look out for. Uh, anyway, what we've got here is a nice little bit of mushrooms on toast for later. If you want to find out more, go to www.wildfooduk.com.